Good afternoon. My name is Edward Cato Sanchin, overall, sir. I'm the resident priest here at the Joseph Priestley Zen Sangha in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. We're an affiliate of Empty Moon Zen. Let me talk to you about pilgrimages. I'm getting old. My wanderings here in the countryside of central Pennsylvania are becoming more and more circumscribed. A brief stroll down a wooded lane, a ramble past the neighborhood soybean field. Perhaps the best I can look back upon is a hitchhiking trip from New Jersey to California and back again in the summer of 1972, long, long ago. It certainly had an air about it of serendipity, of not knowing where the next ride would take you, of, of not knowing what might be around the next corner, of whom one would meet. But no, not a higher purpose, though stumbling across a bag of weed in the Sierra Nevada mountains perhaps made its purposes high. Now, other people have made much of wandering. Tolkien famously said, all that is gold does not glitter, not all who wander are lost. The old is, that is strong does not wither, deep roots are not reached by the frost. Thoreau seemed to make a, a life out of wandering the New England countryside. Jack Kerouac and John Steinbeck both tramped the roadways and rails of North America. Perhaps they too were on pilgrimages. The very word saunter was famously said by John Muir to come from a la santer, though that attribution is suspect, as suspect as the folk etymology itself. Samuel Johnson said much the same thing in his dictionary, though for him, sauntering was something best left to ne'er-do-wells who made bogus appeals for alms. Saunter more likely has a mundane origin, though the word itself, stripped of Samuel Johnson's disapproval, certainly captures the spirit of a pilgrimage. And there have been other pilgrimages that have beckoned. The Scottish Highlands have a number. The Pilgrim's Road to Canterbury is tempting, perhaps more so the pilgrimage road through the Pyrenees to Santiago de Compostela, the Way of St. James, if one could ignore the Islamophobia at its heart. The Australian walkabout may come closest to my mind in capturing the spiritual heart of pilgrimage. And there are a few in Japan, notably the route laid out a thousand years ago by Kukai, also known as Kobodaishi, who brought Shingon, that tantric school of Buddhism, to Japan in the ninth century and is supposed to have established a pilgrim's route connecting 88 temples on the island of Shikoku. There was a time when that was extraordinarily attractive. To walk that route dressed in the white clothing that would be appropriate to be buried in should you die on the way. Chanting the Heart Sutra as you walked. To walk accompanied by the spirit of Kobodaishi. Doyo Ninin we too go in together, the pilgrim and Kukai. Diane Benaj, a Soto Zen nun, here now in Lewisburg, tells of her years in Japan, finding her way to Zen practice on that very pilgrimage. And the Chinese statesman Ye Lu Kyu Kai found himself, like many of his bureaucratic compatriots, attending the Mongol court of Genghis Khan and far from his Chan teacher, Wan Song. Wanting to continue his studies, cut off from his teacher, in a sense, 
wandering the barren lands far from home on a kind of pilgrimage himself deep in the north of China. Lu asked his teacher to compile a lost collection of 100 koans originally set out by Hongji Zengre. With one song's commentaries, this became the Book of Serenity, one of the Soto school's most treasured texts. And in it, we have a wonderful tale of pilgrimage. Case 20, Dijang's Most Intimate. Let me flesh it out. Late one evening, following a long, hard day wandering, sauntering, if you will, from temple to temple, Fayan looked up in the twilight and saw there in the distance the next stop on his pilgrimage. Monks in those days often traveled from temple to temple, seeking the teachings of the Zen worthies they might find there. And so after a long day trudging and looking forward to, if not just the Dharma, but then a, a simple meal and a mat to lie down on for the night, Fayan knocked on the temple gate which was opened by Dijang. So what's up, Dijang might have said. What have you been doing out there in the dark? What brings you here? I wander aimlessly on pilgrimage, replied Fayan. I follow where my feet take me. Ah, said Dijang. What do you think of wandering? I don't know, he said. And here's the clincher, the line I always come back to, Di Zhang returned, not knowing is most intimate. Yes, not knowing opens that place of non-separation, of, of pure intimacy. Konyamata points out that Di Zhang is not asking, why are you on pilgrimage? Questions that could be answered. You know, I, I seek the Dharma. I, I'm looking for a teacher. I want to get out of the house. No, for Yamada, Tishang was asking what the essence of pilgrimage is. And Fayan gets it, perhaps without quite knowing it immediately. I don't know. Tishang nails it home for him with his not knowing is most intimate. And then Fayan really gets it. And here's the thing, hold that lightly. When Chao Chao asked Nan Quan, how do you know the way without directing yourself towards it? Nan Quan tells him, knowing is illusion, not knowing is blankness. In our journeys, as we wander, Hold the not knowing, but hold it lightly. Treat it as you would a small bird, a bird that has had the grace to alight in your hand, a bird that flutters there, its heart beating wildly in the palm of your hand. Cradle it, and it won't leave you too soon. Clutch it too tightly, and you'll crush the life out of it. Knowing, not knowing, both living, breathing things, delicate, ephemeral. Let them be, let them breathe. Get out and walk, spring is here. The grass and the weeds are growing. My lawn cries out to be mowed. The trees are putting out buds, leaves, flowers. The birds are building nests and driving my cat mad. Those nests will soon be hidden behind those leaves. Follow your feet, pilgrimage aimlessly. Not knowing is most intimate. Knowing is most intimate. Letting them be, that is most intimate.